Hi, my name is Joshua Pilkey, Senior Associate Director of Admissions here at the Knox School. I'm super excited to be here with Mr. Angela Morrow and some Knox students for our virtual information session on our STEM program. Take it over, Mr. Morrow. How's it going, everyone? I'm Angelo Morrow, and I am our STEM director and STEM teacher here at the Knox School. And I am here presenting with two of my students, Ms. Madison Coleman, who is my STEM representative for the student council, and Giovanni Pugna, who is my TA club representative and kind of overall like a second hand around here. Um, I'll be starting off with a little bit about ourselves. Um, sorry, one. Oop, went a little far. So I joined Knox in 2018. Um, I came in as our sole STEM teacher and I picked up where we left off. Um, in 2019, uh, we received a generous donation from a family and I built up the STEM program to offer way more than what we originally had. And as you can see behind us is um, the school's STEM lab, which has everything we need to offer all different courses that we'll be talking about. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I went to St. Joseph's College and I finished there with a master's in education and mathematics uh, with a minor in computer science. Um, for me, STEM has kind of just been a lifelong passion. Anything that was science or technology based, I kind of was showed some interest in. Um, a lot of my free time right now is even spent learning some new code languages. Um, I even tutor some people on the side to learn some new languages. And a uh, current project of mine is I'm working on a, a new assistive device for uh, the visually impaired and the blind, uh, something to offer them new um, ways to communicate. Um, so we'll move on with some of the courses that we have offered here. Uh, so we break it down into pretty much three categories, two for upper school, one for middle school. Uh, so computer science and engineering, I have everything that goes from introduction to coding, computer science and engineering. Um, we have also a possible, the opportunity to offer AP computer science courses, both computer science principles and computer science A. And I also have a course I designed called the, the STEM capstone where students get to conduct research and development of something that they want to do to potentially create a solution for a problem that may exist. Uh, under the 3D printing and robotics, this is where engineering is starting to grow more. I introduced 3D printing back in 2019 with the construction of the lab. And I'm also going to be introducing a drafting course based on uh, two-dimensional drafting with geometry elements and how to convert all that to three-dimensional. And then we also have two levels of robotics, introductory and advanced, starting with as simple as our Lego Mindstorms and working our way all the way up to VEX and Arduino with some electrical engineering. And then the middle school program is kind of like a sampler, we can call it, where every three years I revolve the content because I'll see middle schoolers up to three times and uh, we do everything. Uh, we've had a lot of fun doing anything from basic engineering projects to aviation and rocketry, reusable energy. The students get to learn some valuable research skills uh, and a lot of it's all team-based and that goes for everything here. Uh, this space is a good collaborative space where students get to bounce ideas off each other, work together. I don't discourage working together because uh, some of the best ways to learn is either by teaching someone or learning from a friend. Um, so you can see in the picture here and somewhat behind us, this is the STEM lab. Like I said, in 2019, we received a generous donation that built up our lab. Um, I equipped the room with four 3D printers from Dremel. We have 10 hand-built workstations for anything for coding, 3D design and rendering, and pretty much whatever the students want, they can get. If they ask for a piece of software, I throw it on and uh, they, it's, it's free range for them. Um, I do also have in here a large touchscreen uh, table and a large touchscreen panel on the wall. So the students are encouraged and do have the opportunity to use those when they want for their projects. And then scattered about, you'll always find various things, computer parts, tools, um, hardware, everything that basically would spark interest. Um, it's around here. Sometimes it looks like a mess, but that's just because we have projects all over the place. 
so some of these photos are some of what we offer in our classes. Um, why don't you two explain a little bit what you've done since uh, Gio and Maddie have spent all their years almost here with me in classes and they've taken everything. So what better way to hear about the classes than from our students? Yeah, so I joined in 2019 and at first I had no intention like Gio. We both got thrown into a coding class just as an elective because we have to have three of those in the beginning. And we found out, we're like, this isn't that bad. So through on that, I think we've taken every single like STEM course. We went up and we're currently both TAing classes or more for them. I'm currently TAing for computer science and Gio. Um, so same with Maddie. I joined Knox in 2016, way back in sixth grade. Um, once again, in ninth grade, I was just randomly thrown into, into a coding class. I had no intentions of even studying STEM in the future. And due to those three required electives that the Knox School requires, I was able to build my new passion in terms of STEM. Um, I'm currently a TA for a Python programming class that Mr. Morrow teaches. Um, that's basically it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and up on the screen, you can see everything, a little bit of everything of what we do here. So we have um, our 3D printers, which are located off camera. You see a good model of what one looks like. Um, robotics, we have oh, Lego EV3 is the kits that we use. Pretty fun and easy to build. Um, anyone with or without experience in Legos can build them pretty well. And then the coding is uh, a good introduction to both coding, computer science, and robotics, as well as a little bit of engineering with intent of design. Um, I'll grab some more things for you to see. Other examples of projects that students have designed and come up with. Um, I mean, we start with basic, just machines and functions and tools like screws and um, moving parts, things to really get a gist of understanding how to design, but use real world measurements to apply virtual to reality. And then uh, after spending some time in the software, students wind up rendering some pretty nice designs. One student made the DeLorean from scratch, one made a Tesla Model 3, the other one uh, made actually a pretty decently looking uh, boat. So we've had some students make a whole bunch of things um, in the classes and learn some good skills from that. For the coding and computer science, uh, we started with Java. We moved on to Python as a more friendly introductory language, still quite a powerful language. Um, I personally have started to find this one really more fun and usable in my day to day life versus uh, Java. But um, Java is going to be reserved for like our higher level for the APs um, and that type of coding class. Uh, computer science was something new that we interest in, um, introduced this year. Uh, it's kind of two levels to one year course. It's computer science, engineering, computer science and engineering. And what that class does is it goes through the whole building process and understanding what a computer is, how it works. Students get to start learning about computers and everything that they do with them. So this is an example of a first time build. Students get to get all the parts and get hands on. They build the computer a few times. Obviously you're gonna run into some issues. So we learn how to deal with our issues. And then behind us, you can then see a white and clear computer right there. That is a finished product build that a student had made uh, at the end of the class. Uh, he was nice enough to leave it here for us to use as an example before he takes it home. Um, and then other things, it's we always have a ton of opportunities going on in the class. Um, and you can see even our middle school group right there uh, in the middle of the room, we were actually doing a good lesson on uh, mechanics of flight and aviation, um, starting as simple as paper airplanes and building our way up to full scale, like uh, scale models of a plane that can actually fly. Uh, this one I'm going to hand off to Gio for a little bit, but this is our new coding loft. Uh, it's a, we had a big change this year in one of our spaces and kind of created a more um, relaxing, more warm place for the students to relax, do their work. They can sit back and work on their laptop. But uh, Gio, 
Uh, tell us a little about what happened this summer with it. Um, over the summer, me along with one other student who goes by John Palowski, as well as Mr. Morrow, um, all decided to revamp the upstairs loft area that we have in the library. Um, beforehand, this room was pretty much only used for printing. You know, not many people used it. As of now, it was pretty empty, pretty barren. But since then, we completely re repainted it, revamped it with new furniture, added a TV, new computers, mounted them to the walls, and pretty much ended up building this room from scratch. And um, this room kind of serves as an area for people to relax, people to study, as Mr. Moore already said. And we're also currently using it in our introduction to Python class where we have like kind of hard lecture classes presented here in the normal STEM area while from time to time we will go up into the loft area, relax, have some, have kind of a soft learning experience with our own different projects and everyone can work on their own thing for a while. Thank you, Gio. Um, yeah, so he explained it perfectly. The whole point is to create a nice space where their students have like that cold or hard learning in the classroom and then they can go and relax and take their own pace for a couple of classes to catch up on things or understand what they need to work on or even work together. Again, I don't like to keep things individual. Everyone can help each other out. Um, so with the hands-on learning, pretty much as we've been explaining this whole time, uh, all of my classes are hands-on learning. Um, while we do have some points where we have to stop, look at the board and go over how does this work or why do we do this, um, it always results in a group discussion, uh, people contributing information or making even connections to things around day-to-day -day, like how would I use this coding here? Or if we're doing conditional statements, don't we understand that maybe we do say if this, then that during the day, we just don't know it. So um, we always have either a group discussion that leads into learning more. And then we go on to our hands-on learning, which the students, I mean, everything in here, it's kind of hard to do pen and paper in this class. Everything's hands-on learning. Um, whether it goes again for simply just building a simple mechanism for a robot or building a computer, typing on the computer, um, everything is involved and hands-on in here. And then now we get to actually breach into the middle school program. So middle school, uh, I stated earlier, is basically it's a three-year revolving program since I can see kids all the way from sixth through eighth grade. Um, I don't ever want to repeat content because it would kind of be boring to see the same thing over and over again. So we get to try new things all the time. Uh, part of our aeronautics and space engineering, we looked into research, design, and learned about all the mechanics of rocketry and building a rocket from ground up. We built all of these rockets from scratch, and then the students got to throw a motor in it, and we threw it up into the sky. Uh, really fun projects, and the kids, I mean, there was, we all learned a lot from that. Um, <laughs> continuing on, we have basic engineering projects that we like to try and do. A lot of the, a lot of what the middle school do, uh, middle schoolers do blows me away. Um, some of the work that they've put in has even surpassed some of what my high schoolers have done in the past. Um, last year, we started with robotics and then the kids said, well, we're having fun, but we want to try something else. Can we do this instead? So they wanted to do engineering and bridges and strength testing. So we took a couple days for a few weeks and we built bridges and towers out of Lego. And then we put some weights on them and tested them to see who built the strongest one. And then we learned from one and modified our designs to code, get onto our next iteration and see what works best. Um, even uh, in that bottom right picture, one year the students, uh, I gave, I always give the students an option of what they want to learn. And this year they had said that they wanted to learn about slime and they wanted to make slime. It was a whole big trend and all that stuff. So I'm like, let me see what I can do with this. 
30 different recipes later, I came up with uh, a bunch of them that the students had to figure out which ingredients go with what, and they had to predict what texture. It was a big lesson on uh, scientific method. And then they, once they pooled all their information together, they gathered the supplies they need and they made the slimes. And I became the most hated teacher in the school because every middle schooler was distracted with some messy slime in, their, uh, in the rest of their day. Um, and then, as I showed you one of them, we have the robotics here. It spans all the way from middle school up through to the high school. Middle school is basic understanding just even coding. How, to, how do we get things to go from our abstract thought to linear programming and linear thought models that would be thrown into a robot just to do a basic process? And every year we always offer the annual STEM and science fair. Uh, STEM became a major part of it back in 2018, uh, 2019, sorry. Um, and we, from there on, it's always just been an ever growing uh, program where the students do some research and it takes a while. The students have to figure out what they want to research. They have to write up a paper, do the right research on it. And then they have to come up with some sort of product that they present whether it's um, just basically researching something and showing some physical evidence or um, the student on the far left, Patrick, he wanted to learn about the eternal flame. So I helped him design a module that was able to restrict and control the flow of butane in a balloon. And we were able to get a giant balloon of butane to burn for a couple minutes on end. Uh, the student on the far right, Quinn, he actually got uh, early acceptance into Rochester Institute where he's at now, and I still keep in touch with him. He's uh, currently interning at a pretty uh, well-known machine shop up there um, for engineering. So he's and um, he was actually here designing a or he was testing out ideas for a new synthetic muscle type using uh, compressed air and surgical tubing. So a lot of what our students do here does actually show a lot of uh, like interest in what they're doing and then they get to move on with that and I'll always offer them up the supplies and the tools to do so. Um, overall, here are our science class offerings. Um, so after STEM, there is also science that we do have required courses that the students do have to take, um, but we do have a very large and still growing list of classes that we offer. Uh, so we have science six, seven, and eight, which are the middle schools. Biochemistry and physics are the basic ones. Uh, and then over the years, over the past two years since I've been here, we've added some new classes like marine biology, equine science, kinesiology, sports psych, anatomy, and physiology. Um, all of those are brand new within the last three, four years about. Um, <laughs> and then on the right side, we have all of our APs and college level courses. So the first five of those are some AP courses that the students can take throughout the year through a vigorous course. Uh, they take their test in May, but those get to go up on their college transcript as an AP class that they've taken. Same as with the dual enrollments for college credits. So psychology, uh, all of those psychology classes are dual enrollment classes. Um, students get to take those throughout the year. And then by the, by the time that they're done, they get to leave with some college credits that they can use. Sorry, that's physics, not psychology. <laughs> um, they get to take those physics credits with them to college. And that pretty much wraps up everything here. Um, key points just to share is, as I said, this is a big hands-on collaborative learning space. Uh, the students are always going to be given the option of what they want to learn. I never try to restrict the students on here's a set curriculum and here's what we're going to follow. Um, the beauty of being my own independent department here is I get to make some changes on the fly. So if a student says, well, how do we do this? I want to learn about this and it's not anywhere in my curriculum. I'll be ready to offer it the next day in class or I'll add it in somewhere down the line where it fits into uh, what we wanted to learn. Um, so that's pretty much everything that I was going to share today. Um, Maddie, Gio, do you guys have anything else you would like to add in about the program here? Um, maybe just be intimidated by it because 
like both of us said, we were just thrown into this and we found this whole love where now we're going to be going into college, going into engineering or some type of coding because we found out like this isn't just some nerdy classes that we take, like it's actually something we enjoy. So even if you just have to take it for a class, like you will genuinely enjoy being up here. You'll find yourself at least once a day in Mr. Mara's room. I can promise you that. Yeah. Mr. Mara, I have one question for you. Um, and thank you for the presentation. So with the um, donation in 2019 and really upping the game of your program and your space, where do you see the program and your space moving from now, 2022 on to 2025? What would you uh, like to see happen? So continuing on as I go, um, I'm always looking for new ways to expand and develop. Um, I'm trying to offer as much as possible. I'm hoping to get uh, some new staff hired where I can expand the department and offer more. Um, as one person, I'm fairly limited on how much I can do a year, but I'd love to be able to offer more engineering-based courses that uh, students can then use in more machine learning. Um, no, sorry, machine and machine machinery and engineering. Um, I'd love to be able to start expanding more space-wise as well, be able to attain some tools and such so the students can start to learn more. Like we can use a full-size CNC or lathe machine, um, offer up different types of 3D printing. Um, I'm currently working with our director of technologies. Uh, we're pooling up some ideas on how we can start building up a virtual reality space as well. So the students can work in a classroom that is well physical, but also virtual, um, which will expand our ability to offer more, uh, basically with less. That's awesome. Um, and, and a question from Maddie and Gio, how will you guys be using STEM when you guys go to university or college? How will that be playing a life, a role in your life? Well, currently I'm trying to get into colleges for bioengineering and I'm going to be using that to hopefully make prosthetics in the future or any type of building where I'm basically giving back and helping people in the medical field almost. It's almost like um, combined. Great. Um, and I will be going to college to most likely study computer science more, more directed towards cybersecurity. Um, because in the future, I want to be able to help people, keep people safe from online attacks, viruses, all of that mm -hmm. nasty stuff that you can run into on the internet. Yeah. And what uh, piece of advice would you give to a student applying specifically for STEM about Mr. Morrow and the program? Um, anything that a student should know or some advice you should give? Um don't think that just because you're taking this you can get an easy a because it's an elective you're going to put as much work as you put into your regular math or science-based courses but you'll be having a lot of fun doing it so don't just think oh i'm stressed out because i have to build this no you're gonna have a good time and you're gonna want to be up here and be like oh i can do this in my free time instead i mean i think maddie did a good job at summing it up just make sure you come in here ready to work hard but at the same time don't be intimidated or scared. Um, this is a class, remember that, but it should be a fun class. It should be something you enjoy. And if you're having, having trouble or if you ever have an idea on maybe something you can you want to learn or you want to look into, don't be afraid to ask Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow is a very open teacher. He's very open to students' ideas. Awesome. Well, thank you, Maddie. Thank you, Gio. And thank you, Mr. Morrow. If you are interested in applying to the Knox School, please visit our website or uh, scan the QR code. We also do have an open house coming up this Sunday. Um, check us out. And if you have any questions about our STEM program for Mr. Morrow, his email is down there along with his phone number. All right. Thank you so much and have a great evening.